Good morning to you and thanks for joining us on TVC Breakfast. I am Mike Okwache and I will be flying alone this morning. Uh, the, the point there is a lot of things are going on across the country, interesting ones and fallouts from uh, the elections. Uh, recall that uh, we have been discussing the fallouts from Adamawa State where the resident electoral commissioner uh, there had announced the APC governorship candidate as governor illegally and uh, there has been reaction on that. Uh, we have uh, reports that uh, he, there's an approval from the president for his suspension and uh, there are also moves for his prosecution uh, for what he did you know, in, in Adamawa State. All right, uh, we have details of all of those and on the program today we have, we'll be discussing various issues. But let's bring you the news update and then uh, we go ahead. President-elect Bola Tinubu has wished Muslims all over the world a happy Salah celebration. He says Ramadan is a sacred spiritual obligation and a period of abstinence, self-discipline, self-reflection, and self-purification in gratitude to the Almighty Allah. He also says, and I quote, that we are at the dawn of a renewed hope for a better, greater, and more prosperous Nigeria and I stand ready to walk with all Nigerians, young and old, male and female, with this opportunity to serve you in honor and dignity. Uh, this is a com commitment that I have made and one in which uh, we cannot afford to fail, end of quote. Now, in preparation uh, to May 29 handover date, President-elect Ashwajo Bolatinubu on Thursday nominated 14 more names into the Presidential Transition Council. This is coming a few weeks after he nominated former Lagos Finance Commissioner Wali Edun and uh, Governor Atiku Bagudu of uh, Kebi State. Among them is Honorable Stella Okotete, who will be part of the Secretariat Planning and Monitoring Subcommittee. And uh, the Director of Budget and Finance of Bubaka Kari uh, Media and Publicity, Bayon Onuga, Chief Service uh, Bishop Adegbite, Jumat Service, Imam Faud Protocol and Invitations, uh, Donald Wokoma, Transport and Logistics, uh, Ajia Hadiza Mohammed Kabir, Inauguration Lecture, uh, Dr. Danladi Baku uh, Security and uh, Ceremonial uh, Parade, Colonel Abdulaziz Yaradua. Venue and swearing in Makinde Araoye, medical uh, Dr. Bita Edu, uh, pre inauguration dinner, gala night, barista Zainab Buba Marwa, accommodation, Abu Andrew Abu, children's day celebration, Samira Sadiq. All right, these are some of the names uh, that have been mentioned in there. President Muhammad Buhari has ordered the immediate suspension of the INEC resident electoral commissioner in Adamawa State, Hudu Yunusa Ari, pending the completion of investigation by the Inspector General of Police on the conduct and actions of the REC during the supplementary election in the state. The president also directed that the Inspector General of Police to immediately begin investigation and prosecution of the REC if he is found liable. The president's directive is contained in a press statement from the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and signed by the Director of Information, Willy Bassi. Also, President Buhari has directed an investigation by the IGP Director General of the DSS and the Commandant General of the NSCDC of the role of their officers in aiding and abetting the conduct and actions of uh, Hudu Yunusari and call for appropriate disciplinary actions to be meted out if anyone is found culpable. An FCT High Court sitting in Maitama has adjourned till 12th May for ruling in the suit filed by aggrieved members of the Labour Party against its national chairman and four others over allegations of forgery leveled against them. Judiciary correspondent Celestina Ira has more on this. The suspension of Julius Haburi as national chairman of the Labour Party subsists as the court has refused to leave his suspension. Eight aggrieved members of the party had approached the court for an order restraining Mr. Haburi and four others from parading themselves as national officers of the party. The claimants had accused Mr. Haburi of forging court documents, including receipts and the seal of the FCT High Court 
which they had allegedly used in the substitutions of Labour Party candidates in the 2023 general election. The Nigerian police had conducted and investigated the allegations against Mr. Abure, and the report that contained the findings of the police was presented by the claimant before the judge. It was on this premise that the court granted a restraining order against the defendants, an order the court is yet to vacate. At the resumed sitting, the defendants, in their preliminary objection, argued that the claimant's originating summons contains criminal allegations of, of fraud, forgery, perjury, and criminal conspiracy, which cannot be determined through originating summons procedure. They argue that the action, having not been initiated by the due process of law, is incompetent and liable to be struck out. The resolution of issues on the leadership of the Labour Party is firmly rooted in the internal affairs of the party and not justiciable. After taking argument from parties, the court subsequently adjourned to 12th May for ruling. Against somebody in a criminal nature, you should have come by writ of someone so that they will come in and defend themselves. They also had their own answers to the to what we have said. So um, we are properly uh, before the court, and the court has had both sides. When the court made an order since the fifth of April, restraining them from parading themselves as a national executive of uh, the Labour Party and an interim uh, body has been set up. They have continued to parade themselves. Uh, the, uh, uh, Mr. Aburi, without regard to the order of court. Teams has told the court that they will be filing a content charge against the defendants for alleged disobedience to the orders of the court. At the last adjourned day, Johnson Hamzad had issued a restraining order against Labour Party National Chairman, its National Secretary and its Organising Secretary from parading themselves as national officers on allegations of forgery levelled against them. Celestina Iria, TVC News, Abuja. The Ninth National Assembly has been urged to facilitate the review of the country's youth policy for sustainable economic growth. This was the consensus at an advocacy platform to set agenda for youth inclusion in the 10th National Assembly. Parliamentary reporter Joker Desai reports. The youth population remains the human capital hub of any nation. Experts say the level of youth development in a society indicates the quality of its preparations for the future. We have this slide represented by... This meeting of youth groups, legislators, media and civil society groups is to underscore the role of youths in national growth and set the agenda for their inclusion in the next parliament across the country. Other paper advocacy initiative, a non-governmental body, leads the implementation of a project termed Promoting Open Parliament for Upscaling Legislative Accountability, codenamed Popular. A key focus of the project is to popularize the Open Parliament Index, which seeks to assess civic participation and public accountability. 60% of Nigeria's population are under the age of 25. So we have a very strong, viral, uh, um, young population. What this means is that you have energy to go around, energy that can be directed towards championing legislative accountability. In the last general election, a number of youths made impressive outings, but many believe more still needs to be done to show up the figures. Of importance is the need for the current National Assembly to facilitate the review of the 2019 to 2023 National Youth Policy. We believe that the 10th Assembly can be a powerful agent of change to the youths if priority is placed on youth-related issues and mitigating the crippling factors in order to secure the economic agility and strength of the youths. For the legislators attending to the needs of the youth, who form a large chunk of the nation's population, is critical to redressing incessant uh, unrest. What were you able to do between electioneering period of 2020, 2021, 2022, to ensure that the house is made up of at least 70% of youths. And once that is done, already you know that you have soldiers that you'll be able to work with. The National Youth Policy aims to promote the enjoyment of fundamental human rights and protect the health, 
social, economic, and political well-being of all young men and women in the country. This is expected to translate into a vibrant and sustainable economy. Jokia Adisa, TVC News, Abuja.